Live from our newsroom, it's the Hard Times Podcast. With Bill Conway and Matt Sangum. All right, Andrew Cannon joining the Hard Times Podcast today. Andrew, it is a, a pleasure to have you on. Now, before we, we jump right into this, I, I have to confess something. So we've recently become adult friends, which is always a, a, a weird thing. But uh, there's been multiple people that have said to me since uh, you've popped up in my social feeds and various things, they say, oh, man, I love Andrew Cannon. What a great guy he is. I love his Santa Cruz videos. So my question to you is, do you know you are universally revered? Uh, I definitely don't think that's the case, but I, I try to be as nice as I can. Feet so. to the fire here with these questions, Bill. <laughs> yeah, well, Just I out really the gate. Asked, yeah. I really asked the hard stuff. Uh, yeah. you know, these, we want uh, people to come on the times. show and feel comfortable, dude. What? <laughs> I'm sorry about his behavior, Andrew. This guy is completely inappropriate. I, you know. <laughs> You well, know what? We're just we're just trying to have we're trying to make videos that are inviting to anybody who's gonna want to learn about skateboard products. So, uh, and I mean, I would just say that overall, I'm a pretty nice person. So. I would disagree from, from what I've from what <laughs> the the time that we've spent together. I think you do a good job at making yourself seem friendly on camera and personable, but like once it's done recording, it has Behind not been scenes. pleasant. Yeah, Andrew Cannon is universally <laughs> known as the Ellen DeGeneres of skateboarding. He, his wrath just is, doesn't just yeah. doesn't treat people well. Yeah. He said, "What did I tell you about getting that fucking picture of the trucks up on the website, man? <laughs> you posted a story instead of posting it to the main feed on Instagram. I will fucking see that your entire family burns for this. Do people uh, ever snap uh, skateboards over their knees? Like Bo Jackson uh, baseball bat style? Bo Jackson mad snap my skateboard. I don't think not normally. It's definitely not the because they're just not tough move. enough. <laughs> it's, that's what it is. It's the lack of toughness. Um, <laughs> no, it's usually the stomp. Everyone just goes stomp through the middle. Mm. Do you ever? Do you ever do the fall on your butt to focus it? I never like. Uh, God no. Yeah, it seems like that. I I understand people do it, but that just seems like a a bruised tailbone waiting to happen. Yeah, it, Matt. I'm picture. Not, I'm not here for it. Picture this, breaking your skateboard like a professional wrestler would break a table if he was like pile driving somebody through it. Like so butt first through a table, like people will just like fall down and crack their skateboards in half that way. Uh, and I, it doesn't make sense to me. I was probably in second grade, maybe. And it, we were in computer class. It was like a separate class where you learn to use the computer, right? And I... Uh, was just joking around my friends and I decided instead of sitting down normally, I was just gonna like jump up as high as I could and then land on my butt to sit down. Oh. On the chair? No, on the floor. Like oh. I was just like a kid and for oh, some reason, God. I like hadn't figured out yet that that would hurt, I think. Like I didn't really understand. <laughs> I think it was like first or second grade, but it's like scarred in my memory because of how bad it hurt. I yeah. probably really hurt myself. Like it's probably you could probably still see it like on my tailbone. I just remember like <laughs> feeling a shock go up my spine. So I could never imagine someone being like, "Yeah, I'm gonna break my scale, my uh, skateboard with my ass." That sounds like a really bad idea. Maybe they're really it's beefy, like Mick Foley type character. You know, got a bunch of padding. No, uh, skateboarders typically terrible. do not uh, have that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is the skateboard community accepting of the plus size community? No, it's not. <laughs> No, no, it is now. Well, it's it, getting so, there. It's getting there. Well, hopefully so not, right? So when I, <laughs> when I was, like, skating as, like, you know, kind of being a pro, uh, I was considered, like, fat, mm -hmm. like a thick boy. And you I still are. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still plenty good. I'm joking. But I was, like, probably, like, two, 200 pounds around that time. Maybe, like, mm -hmm. uh, at my heaviest, I was, like, two. Ew! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> just fat shaming yeah. <laughs> it's like, but but now it's like dude now you have like actual big skaters it's kind of sick there's like yeah. some instagrams like thick boy skate and stuff like that it's yeah, really awesome. that follows that yeah uh, well i mean i run that so i mean yeah. um that's interesting yeah i imagine a really big dude on a skateboard being a little bit unbalanced is what i imagine right a little bit top heavy is that part of it or no it's uh I feel like body like control is body control. Like once you can figure yeah. it out, like, 
I mean, I've, I'm, I'm five, eight and I get a little jealous of like taller skateboarders. It's like, Oh, they could probably ollie so high, you know, like their legs just can move. Uh, but then I see like sh- skateboarders that are smaller than me, like a Brandon Westgate, who I think is only like five, five and he can ollie, uh, straight over, uh, like, uh, one of you. those orange he can yeah, ollie like, over you he could ollie that's, straight over me that's why women require six foot in their tinder bios is because they want to know the guy can fucking ollie super high <laughs> exactly it's all about you know what though but just with the even with the bigger guys it's like it's all about the motion of the ocean mm. you know yeah. you can, if, if you can use it you can use it <laughs> i'm thinking about getting into the skateboarding world i, I haven't skated since i was you know 16 i'm thinking about getting into it just to push the thick boys out and wow. start uh correctly sized skaters instagram and it's gonna be jeez <laughs> this is a you are gonna be out campaign. Quick. <laughs> oh no i'm not you, what is the skateboard community progressive i don't think so i feel like i could go hang out with this i feel like i could go to the skate park and it would just be like walking right into that movie uh 19 or 1990s what was the one that jonah Mid-90s? hill made Mid-90s. Mid-90s. <laughs> i feel like well you'll see a lot am of i wrong <laughs> am i wrong have, has the skating culture advanced at all or are they still just like the fucking blink 182 album's fucking sick like the first one you know there's like uh that's... that actually is totally a thing like there's still like people that are like yeah dude blink 182 and some 41 like they heavily <laughs> fuck with that <laughs> um but it's it's pretty mid 90s but skating i will say skateboarding as a whole has progressed a lot especially in the last like call it five to ten years like it was really for a long time it was like dude in skateboarding you can be anybody who you you can be anybody you want ex- except for that and you got to make sure you wear these clothes and don't listen to that music. That's fucking whack. Mm -hmm. So it was like, you kind of had to follow some guidelines to like fit in. And then in the last probably five to 10 years, it's really become this thing with the internet where Mm -hmm. it's like, Oh, you don't, the gatekeeper mentality is, is kind of out the window a bit and you can just do what you want and you can start your own board company and you can be whoever you want. It's, it's fucking awesome. Right, like you don't have to rely on getting in magazines or whatever, and having the the pre, you know, uh, pre-established funding, I guess, or whatever the capital that it would take to get uh, promotion. Now you can just do it grassroots stuff and have your own carve out your own little part of skateboarding. I think that's great. Look, uh, you know, thick boys. I'm a I'm a slob. I don't know if you're watching this video, but I have horrible style. I'm wearing a sweatshirt I got in high school. Uh, yeah, I look probably like got basketball shorts on. I got basketball shorts on under here, so um, much respect to that that community. Uh, Andrew, tell me about um, getting involved with Santa Cruz Skateboards. Uh, pretty legendary brand, especially its ties to the punk community. Uh, and I guess because I'm a Bay Area guy too, it seems like a, a particularly heightened brand. But but tell me about how you got involved. So um, so I had a basically the. I'll try to keep it as short as possible. We got, grew up we got and- time. We got time. This is a podcast. You know, let, let loose, baby. Uh, I, I grew up skateboarding in Pennsylvania. I moved out to Arizona for college. Um, still wanted to like make it as a skateboarder. Um, had a like three to four year career um, after college was over of being like a pro skateboarder, like a very uh, bottom level pro skateboarder and then which means that people that you had like over, you were sponsored and you went and shot skate videos as like a way to make money and pay your rent yes and cool. uh and on the side i was like announcing skateboard contests and i was doing some work for espn with writing for their website so i kind of had cool. like a bunch of irons in the fire mm-hmm. but um when that ended um my wife was pregnant uh with twins because we have twin six-year-olds and basically it was like, oh shit, all right, well, I got to get a job. So I got my degree in teaching and it was either like, all right, get a job teaching or see if there's anything in skating. And so um, I had seen online that there was a job at Santa Cruz for a brand manager. And I was like, I wonder if I could get that job. And so I went out to uh, visit, well, no. So I went out, my buddy, Chris Haslam was living in Watsonville, which is close to Santa Cruz. And so I went out and visited him and I was like, oh, this kind of reminds me of Pennsylvania. Like, this is kind of a cool place. Like, it's sort of like the East Coast, like windy roads and stuff like that. A lot of Amish people. Lots of Amish folk, uh, horse-drawn buggies. (laughs) And uh, 
So basically I saw it online, went and saw the place and was like, damn, this is actually pretty sick. Went to Tampa pro that year. And that always happens in March. And when I went, I, uh, I Which saw my for, for Matt, who's not a skateboard or Tampa Pro is the one of the premier skateboard competitions. That it's like they, the Catalina uh, fucking wine mixer. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. It is like the Catalina fucking wine mixer. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. If I don't make my nut. So, uh, <laughs> so basically went there, saw my friend Keith Wilson and Keith, uh, I, I had known him for years just through seeing him at contests and stuff like that. Rad guy. He was the brand manager of independent. And so NHS is the distributor that we all work for, but they own. <laughs> was that was that is that on your resume when you applied? Does it say skills rat guy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, he's like uh, brand manager, product developer, rad guy. Yeah. Um, so Keith, I basically just talked to him. I was like, "Hey, is that Santa Cruz job still available?" And he was like, "You want to work for Santa Cruz?" And we talked it through for like an hour and a half of sort of here's what I was thinking. And he was like, "Hey, I'm going to give you." Jeff Kendall's email, who's the, at the time he was the vice president. Now he's the president, but, uh, he was like, yeah, I'll give me your email. You should apply. So I did. And I got a, I seriously got an email back from Jeff. Like I sent him my resume and I got an email back like an hour later, maybe less. And it was like, Hey, can you talk today at 4 PM? And I was like, Holy shit. This and, guy uh, doesn't have anything to do, <laughs> <laughs> which I now know he has lots to do. Um, but yeah, we hopped on the phone and I was super honest with him. We talked for like a, an hour and a half and I didn't beat around the bush on like what I thought was cool about the brand and what I thought sucked. And, um, and then I, he was like, cool, I'm going to set up a meeting with HR and we'll do a second interview. And I was like, whoa, rad. I didn't hear anything for like, I don't know, three weeks or a month. And I thought I blew it because I was too honest. You get to HR and they're like, like they're like, HR's like, so you're a pretty rad guy, but we could get you a little bit more rad. We could probably <laughs> put you into this you company. If very rad, we'd be interested. Dial up the rad. Hey, guys, just a quick <laughs> mandatory meeting. Um, you know, referencing sex or race in the office is not very rad. So if you could try not to do that. All right, sorry. I'll, I'll stop cutting off. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, so basically, um, it was it was similar to that. It was like a lot of rad talk, but um, <laughs> we we ended up uh, we ended up doing some more interviews, and it was crazy because basically it was like I had an interview with HR, and the following week I was going to have one with the current brand manager, and so he was going to step down and just be the art director because um, he was doing both, but the brand was growing, and so. I had one with HR and then the next week in between that, like in that week span of time, Jamie Thomas called me and was like, Hey, I want you to come and be the zero and fallen brand and team manager. And I was like, fuck. Okay. Cause so I, I love, did Jamie. he even, did he even know that you were in the process of this other thing with just like a total random coincidence? <clears throat> no. So it's not totally random. So about six months after I had turned pro, um, I got into a, I, I, there was a best trick contest happening at zero and they asked me if I could announce it. And I was like, yeah, sure. Um, and I was like, you guys got any money for like, uh, for pay. And they were like, Oh, we have a little, what do you want? And I was like, I just want a box of zero shit and a signed Jamie Thomas board. <laughs> and, uh, and so Chad, who was working with him at the time told Jamie that, and Jamie was fired up. And so I like, I sent that to Chad before I was flying out to uh, Vermont for this like winter do tour event and literally like got off the, got off the flight and had this random voicemail and I listened and it was Jamie. And I had known Jamie for a, a long while through Fairman's ties from back East and stuff like that. And uh, he was just always super, super nice to me. And he basically was like, Hey, uh, I don't know where you're at. Are you happy with where you're at in your life? I was like, I mean, yeah, I'm kind of fucking pumped, but I'm never down to hear <laughs> what you're like, what you're talking about. And so he, at that moment was seeing if I was interested in maybe coming over to work for fallen. And this was right after I turned pro, this was probably 2000 and maybe 2011, maybe 2010, something like that. I'm terrible with years. And, uh, so I didn't end up doing it. He offered me the job, but I didn't end up doing it because I was like, you know what? I want to do this ESPN stuff. I want to see where I can take it as far as skating is concerned. And just because I wanted to travel, that was my goal. And so uh, fast forward, I had seen Jamie and I was like, hey man, 
in case anything ever pops up for you, let me know. Cause we were doing an ESPN video at the time. I was like, I'm looking for a job. I got twins on the way, et cetera. And Jamie's got kids. He totally gets it. Um, and so he randomly just hit me up and it was like the craziest timing because NHS is a slow moving ship and anyone you talk to about hiring or doing things, it's like, there's just a lot, it's a really big ship. So it takes time to get it moving. Right. And, they have to uh, check references on radness and all of that yeah. and see if, okay. Uh, excuse me. What's the rad meter looking like on, <laughs> on Andrew? Um, he's, you know, yeah. so moderately they, rad, uh, <laughs> medium rad, medium, medium to okay. So, uh, so he called threw that out there and I was like, holy shit. So I had a conversation with the new brand or the brand manager of Santa Cruz and let him know, Hey, if this is something you guys are actually interested in, you're like serious about me, can we speed up this process? Because I just got a job offer for the exact same thing. And I need to let him know. Um, so I went out and, uh, I went out, talked with Jamie, kind of met their crew and saw everything. And honestly, I was like, I was like 90 five percent sure i was gonna work for jamie um i just love i still love jamie he's just a great dude and um you know he's always just been someone that inspires me and i love how dedicated he is you know um and then basically i got i went up to nhs right after that and i sort of saw how happy everyone was and how stoked they were and they were like this great team working together and at the time zero and fallen were in a tough spot and so it was like when i went in there the mood was very different than when i went into nhs and so i was like oh shit!" and so talking with my wife um i got an offer from nhs uh, and santa cruz and i was super super thankful for it and then took her to Santa Cruz and we checked it out. And she was like, I would rather live here than Southern California. And I was like, okay. And to be honest with you, I was really excited about the opportunity with Santa Cruz because it's been a brand that's been around forever and they have so much great like IP and there's just, there was so many good things with the brand that I was like, I think we can really boost this if we put some serious hard work in, you know? Um, and so I, didn't do the zero job and went with Santa Cruz and it's been uh six and a half, almost seven years now. And, and the zero know, brand's fucking dead it. and Santa Cruz is <laughs> top no. of the mountain. Yeah. Zero's, and zero is doing awesome. RIP, RIP yeah. zero. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, but it was just Matt crazy. is actually half right. Cause fallen did go away, but fallen is back fallen now. Did. Um, yeah. it, which I, I don't understand that Fallen is back without Jamie Thomas, but that is a different conversation for another podcast. Uh, for another time. Yeah. Uh, Andrew, so, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Bill. Uh, so I, I had a question going back um, pre uh, all, all pro skateboarding, everything, and just going back to the East Coast. We are roughly the same age. You're from Pennsylvania. It would put you in the world of when you're coming up the older kids are the Bam Margeras of the world and jackass is popping off. Did that influence, like it made it to Massachusetts to the point where everybody was going around in shopping carts from the skateboarders to the jocks. Was it even crazier there because everybody just wanted to imitate what those guys were doing and driving around, running shit over with their cars. Uh, every shopping parking lot across the country had their shopping carts locked up. So kids weren't throwing them off of bridges or whatever. I think it was actually probably way more mellow than everywhere else in the world because literally we're from the same town. And so like the Acme, the, the, the place where they did all that parking lot stuff was like the grocery store by my house. So there was like, I, I just don't think we got into that stuff because those guys were doing that. So it was like, Oh, right. they're like, they have this thing that they're doing. Are we going to bite them? And, and I was always just way into skating. So I was like, I just want to go skateboarding. I don't want to fuck myself up in a shopping cart and not be able to do that. <laughs> um, but it was, yeah. So it was like, Bam was the older guy. I remember um, I would buy like used boards and shoes off of him. And my mom was literally, cause you know, you know how it is. Like at that age, your mom's or dad are just like, I'm not buying any more shoes. Like no way. So my parents were always like, you can buy a board from him for $20 or shoes for 20 or $30 
please try to buy. And she'd be like, just get as much as you can from him. So like, I'll never forget. Bam came over to my, he drove some shoes and maybe a board or something over to my house to like sell to me at the time. And, uh, he came and skated in my barn and it was like the janky setup, like built a flat ramp, had a little bench with like a water jug or something like that. And you could like Ollie over or whatever. And he very healed over it, like first or second try. And I was just like, he's the greatest. Um, <laughs> and so, so I, I, I love that guy. And um, Bam's always just been a, he's just been super rad. I mean, uh, it sounds cheesy, but like, so after I turned pro, I went back to Pennsylvania or whatever. And this is when Bam was still partying. And I think he's sober right now, which I hope he stays that way. But um, I, w- I went over and skated at his house because he had this awesome, it was a barn, but it was like a nice one that was like built fresh and he has a skate park in it. And uh, I was like, hey, I'm out skating, whatever. Because the deal was like, oh, if you know the code and Bam's cool that you can go over and skate. And uh, dude, he came out and he was like, pretty hammered at that moment but he was so nice and complimentary and like congratulated me and it was just like it was almost like nothing else matters because this person that I've always looked up to and has always been nothing but nice to me when they didn't have to be like was so sincere about like congrats man you deserve it and I was like oh even if the internet doesn't think it I'm so glad you think it (laughs) that's great yeah it's good it's going to be, I mean, when you come for skateboarding on the East Coast, I feel like, uh, I mean, Massachusetts, where I'm from, there are some big name pros that came out of there, but BAM coming out of that area was transcendent on to the mainstream and create, like he had stalkers and shit like that. Like, did you ever, were you ever exposed to any of the wackier shit that went on? Like, oh, yeah. as far as, yeah, yeah. So there was- dude. The, well, so, okay. So Fairman's is the skate shop that we all skated for. It's in the heart of Westchester and uh, it's still around. Um, but at that time, the amount of people that would come into Fairman's trying to buy BAM boards and trying to like, it was nuts. It was like always people from Germany. They were like, oh, y'all here to see BAM, y'all. And uh, so they were like, there was so much like. So the, sorry, when you say BAM skate BAM for, family, that means that the this local we skate sponsored, shop. Right? would give you guys money or skateboards or something and say, you guys are our skaters. Yes. Yeah. And, and Fairman's was like really awesome about all that stuff. So Dave Fairman, like used to build boards back in the seventies and then started the shop and he's the best dude. I owe Dave Fairman more how than much anybody do you, else. How much do you give little kids to be uh, on part of your skate team? Yeah. If honestly, like he would hook us up with like, Oh, you get X amount of boards a year. You dude. Know? Bill, when are we amazing. starting the hard times skateboard team? All we got to do is find some super talented kids and give them like $100 worth of stuff that we're making anyways. And then they'll be walking advertisements for us. Come on, Bill. Well, whatever we can do to exploit child They better labor, be funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Those kids better have a good sense of humor. Okay, sorry to cut you off. Keep going. Yeah. No, so, uh, but they were just, oh, so this one is actually good because this is a music related one. But so there was all kinds of crazy shit that would happen for like, probably the span of like two or three years, like just people would come in all the time, like people from all over the world, whatever. But so one night, um, and I'm like way into all kinds of like metal, hardcore, punk, whatever. And uh, I really loved like fucking that old Cradle of Filth shit, like Dusk and Her Embrace. Like those albums are super sick. And uh, Cradle of Filth was playing in a cornfield. <laughs> They had a setup. And so we were like, sick, we're going to go do this because they're going to play it for the fucking Viva La Bam show. And so we go to this cornfield and it's super rad. And I'm like, sick, we're going to hear Cradle Field play. And they didn't actually play. It was all like, it was all overdone. Mm. And I was oh, like, yeah. damn it. But so whatever. I was like, eh, that's sick. I wore my Cradle of Field shirt to Fairman's the next day. I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, that's right. And I owned the shirt. It wasn't like I bought it there. And so there was nowhere to buy it. We're in a fucking cornfield. And uh, <laughs> so I'm in the shop. Working. We got merch over by the pumpkins. Uh, we'll see you guys later. <laughs> Make sure you pick up some cider. So <laughs> the, uh, so we're, I'm at the shop. I'm working whatever at the front. I'm like looking down. All of a sudden I look up and in walks this super small person. And uh, I'm like, holy shit, that's Danny Filth. And he just looks at me and he goes, nice t-shirt 
And I was like, <laughs> thanks. And then Bam walks in like two seconds later and he's like, oh yeah, I need to get a, a backpack for Danny. Like, and I was like, okay, cool. So, but it was just so crazy to be in this thing where you're like, I just went and saw them not play in a cornfield to then comes in. I was like, hey, this is gr- wild. Great CD last night, guys. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. didn't even play. No, but that that's the thing. The music wasn't even like played out loud. Oh, they, they just like overdubbed it. They did it in post. Oh my God. So they didn't, even, they just had like a click track going or something like that. They probably yeah. had something in their ears, but like, it was so weird. Did Once. they ask you guys to like dance and act like the music was playing? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I like I don't even remember. It was pretty weird. Um, it was pretty weird. Did you go to the do tour in San Francisco where Lil Wayne uh, played? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Yes. Did you see the yeah. performance? I don't remember if I saw it or not. Okay. I, I, well, did he play on the street course? Yeah. And he came out and... I, you know, you experienced this thing with me that, you know, not very many people experience. Lil Wayne comes out onto the street course of the Dew Tour and he goes, raise your fucking hands if you've got no problems at all. If all of your problems, relationship problems, financial problems, if they've all been solved. <laughs> this new song is called I Ain't Got No Problems. And everyone's like. There's like two hands going up. You're like, I, not really. You know, I got <laughs> plenty of fucking problems. Literally, you look around, like everyone's just like, I mean, to be honest, my credit card debt's kind of fucked <laughs> up. I'm, I'm at a free skateboard event. And then he goes and he, he does his whole thing uh, pretending to rap. It's like overdubbed. And then there's like a little bit, he, the crowd's like, okay, cool, good enough, right? And then he has a little talk with the production crew, and then he's like, okay, camera wasn't rolling, so we're going again. Yeah. Who's got no I do remember problems? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I fully remember. I don't remember the, like, come out speech, but I absolutely remember <laughs> it not happening because I was working. I was, like, on the course announcing and, like, doing sidebar interviews. And, yes, that was crazy. Dude, and we that were, was, like, a big issue. We were, like, in the same – uh press booth area there. yeah so i was reporting for a local college uh paper okay i'm gonna ask you about something else oh wait, uh, did do- you read matt's uh report on the do tour uh and how In did you feel about his college paper <laughs> i was at, i was a college reporter and i was interviewing some pro skater and like on his website it was like so-and-so is a happily married family man who is well-known in the skate community as being like a role model for others. And I was like, hey, man, what's it like being a role model for others and showing your stable marriage off? And he's like, I just got divorced. <laughs> I was like, Sick. I was like, okay, thanks. Um, You're like, might want to update the website. <laughs> I, I was. I told him after. I was like, dude, I'm sorry about that question, but dude, it's like on your website. Um, okay. That is Here's so a, wild. Here's a more specific question for you. Do you remember the PR person from that event? It was a woman. She was particularly attractive. <laughs> Do you remember that attractive I guess he's a, I guess he's a married guy, so maybe she... <laughs> she. My wife was there, man. Uh, I don't know. I, I'm not sure who the PR girl was at the time. Okay, well, there was a PR girl, and I was at this event with one of my friends. He was my photographer, and she came up to us afterwards and the event was winding down and she was bored or whatever. And she wanted to go see San Francisco. She hadn't been there before. And she, she was asking us all these questions like, like, what's the best food around here? It's like, there's there like drinks to get around here. And I was like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I was like shooing her off. And then after she, after she left, my friend was like, dude, why the fuck did you do that? Uh, and I was just too oblivious. I didn't realize she was trying to hang out with us. <laughs> it's a, you blew I, it. I, I blew it. It was totally not rad. It was a rough moment for me. My, my wife has said something similar to me like that when before we started dating. She was like, there was multiple times where I tried to like hang out and you like disregarded, and I was like, that didn't happen. You know, like, like it's because I was too stupid to realize uh, these things, the, these clear signals. Uh, so, I think it's just when you're a broken person with no self esteem, you don't a- ever assume that uh, an attractive woman it was like, wants to hang out with you. It was like an attractive woman came up to me and was like, hey. That was a great event. I'm, you know, I'd really love to go out and see the city. Is there anywhere that we could go? And I was like, what are you talking about? 
<laughs> it's late. The event's no. over. Bye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, would you like to see the inside of my hotel room? Gross. Yeah. Why would I ever want to see that? Yeah. I have, a, I have a way better room, and you'll never see it, lady. Then, Get away from me. And then so my buddy is making fun of me after she leaves, right? And then he's like, dude, what? She's like, that girl is really attractive, though. And then he Googled her name, and she had won some state <laughs> – competition for what are those things called like uh um, beauty competition yeah she wants a beauty competition she was like <laughs> miss tennessee 2015 and uh <laughs> andrew this is my story to you and uh you know what's funny is that i feel like maybe i do know who it was but i don't i'm not sure but there i mean i will say there was always super beautiful women working at two are you are you kidding me nice are you kidding me dude the hottest girls in the world were the do tour BMX or motocross girlfriends. It was hilarious. These guys would go and they just do like triple backflips, right? And like off, like over like the Capitol building or some shit, just like insane tricks. And then they go and they put their bike up and then right on the rails, there's like just like this flock of like insanely attractive looking girls. I was like, wow, I, hmm. they like the risk, I guess. These guys are daredevils. It's cool. Well, when you can pull in that That's Monster so Energy on. money, man, you know, it's just, uh, oh, wait, no, sorry, this is the Dew Tour. You can't mention Monster Energy Dew Tour. Uh, how, did, how did you get into announcing, like, competitions and stuff like that? Like, did people just, did you pick up a mic one day and then everyone's was like, hey, do the next one? Or what happened there? So, um, my friend Mike Sinclair asked me to do oh, big red event at Woodward. Yeah, Big Pink. Big uh, pink, that's what it is, big pink. <laughs> so uh, Sinclair had, had asked me about like maybe doing that. or I, I think it was like I might have gotten asked to do one at Woodward West, and it was like a kid's contest. And they were like, hey, would you want to come out and announce it? I was like, yeah, sure. Um, and I went out and did it. It was like super fun and easy. And uh, I, when I was in college, I was a karaoke host for a little while because um, I, I definitely loved singing karaoke. Um, and... I you're, old, you're like the only person I've time. ever heard say that. <laughs> it's so fun. I've ne- <laughs> what the guy was like, what, what's your go-to song? <laughs> I've never heard anyone say, I, I, have a, I just really love singing karaoke. I mean, it's very I bizarre. It years, but it's super fun. Uh, <laughs> you're such a good natured guy. <laughs> you're like, you're like the most free, happy individual in the world. I love getting in front of others and perf- just performing, even though it's not my specialty. <laughs> I, even if I'm not a good singer, it's just fun to share uh, <laughs> feelings with each other in a room. It's like, okay, no one else enjoys that, but uh, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, Matt, I do uh, believe we're in the, the minority. Though, but <laughs> karaoke is very popular, but you and I, if somebody was like, hey, you guys want to come out to karaoke? karaoke. Like, no, I'm, I'm going to chop my foot off. Karaoke like, is not like popular. <laughs> karaoke is a scam where one person really likes it and it is somehow able to drag nine people in with them. That's what karaoke rooms have always looked like to me. It's one guy like Andrew being like, I'm going to go again. And then it's nine people being like, it's his birthday. Might as well let him sing, right? <laughs> All right, here's right. 20 bucks. <laughs> no, it, um, my go-tos were uh, I would do anything for love. Meatloaf, of course, of course. Uh, Matt's been time. really into liked... Meatloaf lately. Yeah, okay, now we're <laughs> talking. Loaf. Now we're talking. Did that I Meatloaf do? And I touch myself by the Divinals. Mm, okay, okay. And then uh, I would I would hit share. <laughs> okay. Jump into some share. Also, I would do anything for love. Is like a five minute long song. Kind Dude, of crazy. So long. Kind of a crazy karaoke <laughs> pick there. Really, really loves kind karaoke. Of a crazy guy. <laughs> Isn't there like but, a long <laughs> instrumental interlude towards and the I'm, end of it that's like I'm, two or three minutes? I'm thinking that Andrew's <laughs> so probably fucking, he's probably dancing throughout that entire thing. And then he's doing the male-female duet at the end of it. Yeah. Air piano, uh, no problem. I'm Andrew, not going to say that it was good. I'm just going to say that it was a thing. You seem like a great guy, but if you ever invite me out for your birthday party at karaoke... <sighs> I'm You're busy, like, I'm not dude. going. Yeah. <laughs> but so anyway, so I, I did that for a while. So I was totally comfortable. Like uh, the, the dude at one point was like, hey, man, I think you should be a karaoke host for me. And I was like, yeah, sure. How much does it pay? And it was like 13 an hour under the table. And I was like, done. <laughs> so I did it for maybe, I don't know, six months or something like that. Um, and I totally felt comfortable being up and talking and whatever. And then <clears throat> they'd asked me to do a kids contest, went and did it, had a good time. And they were like, whoa, you were awesome. And so 
one of them, one of the guys that was there reached out to do tour and threw my name out like, Hey, you should check about getting Andrew to do this. And the other guy talked to X games, which was Sinclair. And, uh, then both of them basically ended up hitting me up. And so I was in China at this Woodward grand opening and they were like, Hey, Andrew, would you want to do some announcing? And I was like, yeah, sure. I did. And the people from do tour were there and they were like, let's get that guy on the microphone. And so I started doing stuff at do tour, um, just live event stuff. And it was literally like dude, rodeo clown shit. And, uh, but I was like, yeah, I'm, you're going to pay me to talk. Sure. Let's fucking do this. This is the easiest job on the planet. And I would literally go and be like, all right, you guys, you got to balance Mountain Dew on your forehead and da, 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 like all kinds of shit. And then I would, <laughs> then I'd go down and do some interviews with like skaters and stuff. And, uh, and then it was like started doing that. And then I, they had me do some live event announcing where like I actually announced the brought like the live event thing. Like, hey, everybody, here we go. Next rider in, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, so I was doing that. And then I did some X Games stuff. And then Street League, I basically went to like the first Street League ever. And uh, the guy, Brian Atlas at the time, I was doing ESPN work there. And he was like, hey, hit us with feedback, like honest feedback. And so I did. And I was like, and I really think you guys could benefit from a second announcer. Because at the time, it was just Felix Arguez doing it. And uh, and I was like, and I could do it if you need me to. Jeez. And I just full on said, fuck it, and threw it out there to him. And they brought me in and gave me a shot. And so I've literally been announcing Street League since the second stop ever. Um, and is, and I think is that like one where you will have now. like a producer talking in your ear as well like if you have to like cut to yeah. commercial and stuff and how 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 discombobulating is that uh it's not i think i'm lucky um and i know from like doing personality test shit like through work and stuff like that that my brain is actually a little bit more okay with like multitasking than a lot of people um which is also why i really have to focus because i'll do a million things at once if i can and uh so i think i'm pretty fortunate in that regard that like it works for me you know do they, like, i can have that shit happening and still talk i always imagine the producer in the in the announcer's ear when the producers or when the announcer's trying to sell someone's story they're like, yeah, from the streets of Mexico, a really underdog story. His first skateboard was actually a milk carton with uh, two bicycle wheels attached to it. And then the producer's like, hit it harder. And you're like, uh, he was really fucking poor. No mom, no dad. Harder. Sell it. Sell it. We need the demographic. Uh, we're, we don't know if he's going to be able to make it back home. He has no flight home. Uh, please buy our skateboards. Uh, Vince McMahon in particular is the... Uh, like the king of yelling at his announcers while they're trying to get the job done, just being like, like, he's a demon. Say he's a demon. <laughs> have to... Dude, we would have that shit. I mean, it's like totally real. Vince like McMahon was saying, talking in your ear? Oh, I, I wish. No, we... Uh, Sell it. He's an evil gay guy. Uh, Vince had 100 characters like that. He's an evil gay. <laughs> Tell people he's evil. <laughs> well, so we'll get that. They'll throw out suggestions. The worst is when they're losing it in the truck because there's mm. so much shit happening and then you're like all of a sudden they just come in and they're like cut your commercial <laughs> you're like, you're like oh, okay you know and then <laughs> and then afterwards they're like why are you making that like you you know hard right turn why wasn't it a smooth transition it's like you yelled at me i don't know <laughs> so uh, there's so, dude, there's so many funny things that happen in those moments have you ever like gone back and watched the broadcast and like you could tell like that you were like oh that's when they yelled at me when, when uh yeah <laughs> so for street league when so they they brought me in to do tv stuff after i don't even know how many years but so they were like we really need you you're gonna be the tv guy like i was like okay and uh i was fucking terrified and uh i didn't do that great of a job i was like super stressed i literally was like at an event i had kids coming like they were due like three days later and i was like in jersey on the other side of the country like ah! you know and they're like tons of pressure it was like when they were part of fox sports it was nuts and uh so yeah like we would do those and then they would make us re-watch we would watch the shows together and then we would talk through all the fuck-ups and they'd be <laughs> like and this is what you needed it was crazy and it felt gnarly and now everything's a lot smoother and all that stuff it's like it's changed it's changed people around over there like plenty of times but man it was i'd love to imagine the 
the corporate board of advisors trying to uh, help correct a former pro skateboarder calling a skating event. Just be like, you know what though? They're, they, I, I feel like this kind of goes back to like, Andrew's going to compliment him a so bunch much. here. Yeah. Like here I, I, they, they scared <laughs> the fuck out of me, but I learned so much in that process of like, dude, I, cause I don't watch sports. Like uh-huh. I don't give a flying fuck about any sports at all. Mm. Uh, it's like, they would be like, well, don't you watch this? And I'd be like, no, I don't give a fuck about basketball. I don't give a fuck about football. Like I'm a skateboarder, man. Do they want you to have a catchphrase? No, thankfully they didn't. But I remember sitting at a hotel during one of them and being, they were like, you need to listen to this guy. He's the greatest sports announcer of all time. And And I was like sitting there listening to calls and I'm just like, okay. So then you have like Howard Cosell's cadence on the next one. Like this is Andrew Cannon and I am here at the street league. And like, Andrew, oh, it sounds chaotic. It was weird. Andrew, was weird. Ev- every sport has um, racial connotations that the announcers uh, use against the players. Like uh, when a white baseball player is a good baseball player, they say he has like a high baseball IQ. And when a Dominican guy is a good hitter, they'll be like, he swings at anything. He's a hothead, right? There's a, or he's a real athlete, a real specimen. There's all these like weird subtextual racist things that announcers use. Is there something like that in a skateboard? Do they, they're skateboarding? They're like, wow, man, that guy can ollie really high. Ha uh-huh. <laughs> ha. <laughs> no, th- I, thankfully, there's none of that shit. It is like, <laughs> we, <laughs> there's, there's no discussions ahead of time about, well, you know, uh, no, everything is, thankfully, we're not, we're not on that program. <laughs> well, I'm going to watch a couple of events and I'll, I'll report back to you. It's real You're subtle. Like, you got to look I'm for it. Pick it out. <laughs> yeah, you you got to look for it. There was just like, well, like no. and my homework today is. They're like, he's not a power hitter, but he's a team leader. It's like, why? <laughs> just because you relate to him because he looks like you? Why is he a team leader? What are you talking about? He's really good for the dugout, you know? Huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I love it. I, yeah, I don't know any. I mean, I'm so bad about literally all of that stuff. It's oh, has, wow. has has Street League been on hiatus because of uh, COVID and all that? Uh, yeah. So they they took the year off. Um, Skaters actually, are immune to COVID. Sitting. I. You know what's so funny is I had heard that like somebody actually <laughs> said that, and like that was like an actual quote from a skater, and I was like, wow. Shit is dumb. Uh, if if you if you if you ever slammed at third and army, then you're immune to COVID. You know, like seven thousand retweets. Andrew, I have a theory. In immature dating world, people often talk about how many other partners uh, your partner has had. Right? How many people have you slept with? Some people really care about it. They think it like denotes their value. I think this is wrong. But I do also think you should be allowed to ask a girl how many skaters she's slept with because I found it's at least three, at least three or four. Every girl has had a Oof. skater phase. <laughs> hey, good for the skaters. Good for her. Good for her getting what she wants. For, and, and what's cool is – Do skaters like, do it better? Is that a T-shirt? Is there a T-shirt out there? From like 10 million in sales, skaters do it better? I mean, skateboarders wouldn't wear that, uh, so you know, I don't know who it's for. I think it might be a niche audience, but uh, <laughs> you know, hey, anyone with a you know a few bucks and a silk screening machine and a dream can make it. Happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So with the uh, with the street league being on hiatus uh, and COVID kind of like affecting things, like how has your twenty twenty looked? Are you uh, is it less chaotic than before? Obviously traveling less, I'd have to assume. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been traveling uh, hardly at all. I'll, I'll go to Southern California um, to go do some video stuff and we keep things safe. I mean, I come back, I get, you know, COVID tests and stuff like that. Um, and I don't, well, I think the craziest thing is realizing how little shit I actually do. Like, I, I know there's a lot of people that are like, man, i the, the only thing that I, and I think about it kind of frequently, and I was thinking about it today um, because there's this, so I shared that band Svalbard with you and there's a live in the K pit with them and it's fucking awesome. Um, and so I was listening to that this morning, a bunch, like just kind of on repeat. And I was just thinking about how much I miss live music. 
and like I just miss playing shows and seeing shows and yeah, me too. all of that. And I'm like, if there's one thing I could be like, that's that's the one thing that I want so badly again, you know. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I don't do shit, man. I go to the grocery store, I hang out with my family, and I go to the skate park. So. It's and you like, have a new podcast. Yeah, and we and we podcast, and I we do that from the comfort of our homes, you know, <laughs> to talk us, about skate videos. Tell us about the new podcast. Go, well, yeah, go, I mean, go so, ahead, Andrew. I mean, I have, I know nothing about it, so you're going to have to take the lead here. Well, so like Bill said, we, we became adult friends uh, just because thanks to Instagram, you know, it's like, oh, I, I saw his profile and was like, oh. Fucking hot. <laughs> I was like, well, first off, he's a stud. And I yeah, was like, I, off, I think... You- I think you DM'd me after I posted the picture of like so I, I was in my underwear and I was looking back in the mirror and had yes. like the photo and I was like, I don't know, like this is dumb, you know, like was nope, like the you caption might delete later yeah. and I was like, and- don't delete it. <laughs> that was that was all I sent. Yeah, so no, then I was like, wait, who's this, who's this creep? And I was like, oh, he's, he's kind of cute too. So uh, that's, that's <laughs> just looking at each other, there. two shaved heads just glowing <laughs> in the sun. You're like, this guy, is, there's something about him. He just. <laughs> well, and it was like, I think I saw your profile thing and it was like vegan, straight edge, skateboarder. And I was like, oh shit, that's like, that's like finding a needle in a haystack. I was like, I got to see what's up with this dude. I thought it said you vegan, know? straight edge, uh, God first. No, uh, it's, it says mother Christian Trump supporter uh, is what it what it says. Uh, and then it says police lives matter is what my profile says. Um, currently, I don't know what it said at the time, but right uh, now it's a big blue lives matter thing that I'm promoting, well, right. which I, I shouldn't joke about these things on podcasts because apparently people have listened to uh, our podcast and think I'm serious about these things. The only negative review we've gotten on vert button so far was somebody thought I was serious when I called COVID a liberal hoax. Uh, so uh, they well, said, um, COVID's a liberal I, I, hoax that doesn't <laughs> affect skaters and the plungers are fake. I was playing video games with a guy the other day and he told me, I said, how are you guys feeling about COVID? But I don't know, just trying to make conversation. He's like, <laughs> fucking COVID. You kidding me? I was like, uh oh, here we go. <laughs> He's like, no, see, that's the moment where I would have, <laughs> like, I'm way into weird conversation and like Uber drivers and shit like that. I'm always yeah. like, so oh, how are you? Like, dude, and then they just let it come. Someday yeah. I'm going to write a book called Conversations from A to B. And yeah, it's, man. It's going to be all travel stories because I've had crazy conversations with people on planes. I like that. I like that. Anyway, uh, uh, but yeah, yeah. So the podcast is super fun. It's basically Bill and I became friends. We went skating together. And uh, then, you know, after a bunch of like music nerding and skating nerding, he was like, hey, I have this podcast idea. Like <laughs> we, then we fucked. And it was great. Um, and we were like, let's do it again. And we told our wives that this was going to happen. And they were like, do your thing, man. A lot of people don't know this, but all podcast co-hosts fuck. That's yeah, just it's, how it uh, goes. It's, it's how you bond together. It brings you closer and it helps the flow. <laughs> and that's really what it is. It's synergy, right? Yeah. So, uh, so we, he was just like, hey, would you want to do this podcast? And he kind of threw out the idea. I was like, Dude, that I think my first response was like, "Yeah, I'm down," and uh, and then I was like, "Hey, but uh, we got to get my friend Tim involved too." And the and originally I was like, "So Tim, uh, my friend, our friend Tim Ward, is really funny, like super satirical. He uh, he works on this uh, little Instagram called the Nut Daily News, and it's yeah, funny. Bill likes it. Bill's liked it for a long time. He told me about it. So they, they make funny shit and, uh, you know, they like hard times. They like the onion, obviously. And, um, so, but he's a huge skate nerd and he listens to every skate podcast. Like, so he knows like what's good, what's not like Mm -hmm. what's needed, et cetera. And so already been covered. The topic of the trucks has already been covered. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) So I was like, Tim, Tim will have this good perspective on it all. And also I know that he's really like, he's just a really rad person and he has a lot of background knowledge sounds, so. sounds fucking rad dude <laughs> honestly the rat uh, so if we're looking at the rad meter as far as tim ward the rad meter is just like Wee. i honestly you sold me tim sounds like a fucking rad guy it sounds like a rad he's, podcast he's uh, a rad guy and, and so so we started doing it and it's been super fun and uh it's just a bunch of fucking nerdy dads or not nerdy dads i'm the only nerdy dad but it's a bunch of nerdy uh adults skaters that are talking about skate videos and it's fun because 
first off, these videos are old. So if anyone feels like we're dogging on them, it's like, well, it's fucking 20 years old. Like, stop. Cool. And second, it's just like, it's if people like it, cool. If they don't like it, that's okay. The vert button on Spotify now. Go get yours. And also check out Andrew's band. Tell us about your band very briefly. So uh, basically I answered a Craigslist ad. Uh, I was, uh, so I ran the Philadelphia Marathon and that night I was laying in bed and I was watching like just Netflix and shit like that. And I watched that Rashida Jones documentary, Hot Girls Wanted about like porn, like girl, like girls from porn. And I was like, cause you know, I'm not scared to watch porn. And I was like, dude, I don't want to fucking like, I want to see what this is all about. And I was like, oof, some sketchy biz going in there. So anyway, I watched it and I was like, that's crazy. I wonder if there's like, like weird porn, like, Hey, we want you here. We want you like there, whatever. So I looked up Santa Cruz. I was like, I wonder if that's a thing. And I was like, just checking cities and just seeing if there were any like ads. Cause I was super curious what the ads would say. You got and in a band like, yeah, because you were Santa. trying to find a gig in the porn industry. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I wasn't trying to find a gig. I just wanted to see the ads. Cause I, I figured they would. Sure be buddy. Yeah. Your search history is all porn male actor wanted. I was just looking what was open, you know? <laughs> I, I wish I could say that I have, I'm equipped for that, but I'm nope. not. So anyway, the, uh, so I was looking through and I was like, eh, nothing there. And then I was like, ooh, I wonder if there's any bands that are looking for people. And I went into the, like, that section on Craigslist and it was like, uh, doing going down, it was like vocalists needed. And uh, the band, it was like, <clears throat> For fans of Converge, Isis, uh, what was it? It was Converge, Isis, Neurosis, and Sleep. And I was like, well, I like three of those because I'm not a big sleep fan. Um, but I was like, dude, that's fucking sick. So I sent them an email and was like, hey, guys, I live in Santa Cruz. You guys are in Salinas. That's like 40 minutes away. If you're interested, I'd be happy to come down and try out. And uh, they were like, yeah, so the band's called Warship. Um, it's in not like a warship, but like Warship that style. And uh, we put out a record in July. And I, yeah, it's fucking awesome. Just they're rad guys, like nerdy about all kinds of music. And it's nice to have some friends that are into the shit that I'm into because there's not many skateboarders that are. All right, Andrew, the vert button. Worship is great meeting you, man. And uh, if people want to hear more of Andrew and Bill talking, go check out the Vert button on Spotify or anywhere where you can find a podcast. And we got the the Santa Cruz YouTube channel as well, is where you you pop up uh, quite often. Is that is that correct? Absolutely. So uh, so yeah, go go check out all of those things. And uh, Andrew, this has been a pleasure as always. And I'm sure I'll be texting you in like five minutes to uh, say, hey, we should uh, <laughs> talk about this video for the next podcast. Perfect. Thanks, guys. We'll see ya.